Libra. Hello everyone. I would just like to take a slight moment off the top here before we start our July forecast. I just want to thank you all for the inspiration you give me that again can hopefully be inspiring you. I would love to thank each and every country but that would be a long list. We are now being viewed in 177 countries. So you know who you are when I thank you for that blessing and for you sharing these videos. And also I want to thank those of you that I've been able to touch in a personal level in our personal private readings. I want to say hello to all of you and you know who you are. So let's take a look at what July is going to bring you. Hello Libra, this is your July forecast for 2013 and we got a menu going on here this month that I think you're going to be quite pleased and happy with. First off, on the top of the month though, there is a little issue that needs to be corrected or fixed or encountered and it might be an old issue because Saturn retrograde is involved with your Venus so you might be confronted with something that might feel like somebody's picking on a scab here. It's like, here we go again. And normally you can balance that pretty well. Uh, you're Libra and you don't like the big drum on the big waves. However, though, on this very same day, your sun is going to be opposed by Pluto. And uh, no matter how well you've done in this old issue, um, the, this Plutonian energy kind of fills up over time, over time, over time. It's like this volcano coming to the top and oops, here comes a reaction. And you will let it be known that you do not appreciate whatever this issue is. And uh, But it's going to be over pretty quick. I see you kind of separating from that whole scenario on the third. So things should be coming together for you on the, anyway. And uh, the, your, your feelings, this Venus, will be jiving there on the 7th and the 8th as she trains with Uranus, you know, uh, some unexpected situation um, out of the blue. And it could be exciting because it is in a trine, a very good aspect. And on the 7th and 8th here, we also have Saturn moving direct again. So old karmic issues over and done with. Saturn has been sleeping since end of January and uh, he's been on the couch, but he's back in the game. And now to the good part of our menu is with this Saturn, and we need a strong Saturn to really give root and grounding to the projects and the goals, hopes, wishes, dreams that we have. If not, dreams will only be air castles. And um, here on the 17th, we have Jupiter and Neptune forming a golden trine in the sky and those two together wow can they just whip up beautiful big dreams um, as Jupiter is expansive Neptune is endless without limitation so put those two together you could just imagine how Neptune will dream the ideal which is good in any situation but they don't always seem to happen or come together uh, if, if Saturn doesn't come along to secure it. And this is what it's doing on the 17th. The aspect is there also on the 18th and 19th. Saturn now moving direct since the 9th is uh, in the game saying, if this is what you want, and you know how we say, be careful what you wish for. This is one of the times I would say, be very careful what you wish for because Saturn is going to deliver it for you. So anyhow, pay attention to these days, mark it on your calendar and work up towards it, up towards the 17. Uh, refine your thoughts, you know, make sure that you weed out and delete the things that you do not want to be a part of this new picture and, and make it picture perfect. Now to add to it here on the 20th, Mars is going to change signs out of uh, Gemini. Well, actually, a little earlier there on the 13th, but Mars on the 20th, right after this golden aspect, he is going to meet up with the golden triangle. So talk about things kicking into action really, really quick. It's like no sooner have you dreamt or wished for something, 
Mars is going to put the pedal to the metal and give it full speed forward so that you can take action on bringing this into real life, into this 3D world. So the only thing I want to caution though is that Mercury is still retrograde. We're talking the 17th to the 20th here with everything happening back to back like this. Mercury will be uh, retrograde to the 21st. Okay, so don't sign in anything and don't feel you have to catch the train because this triangle is not going away relatively quickly. They're slower moving planets. They're going to be sticking around for a while and Mars moves so quickly that it can wait, but it's like a racehorse being held back at the track, you know, so uh, pace yourself. Um, Mercury going direct on the 21st, I would say if you can give it a few days to a week uh, before you do sign anything, that is even better just so Mercury can get out of its shadow from its retrograde. And then we have also uh, Venus uh, here. Fun month for you because Venus is in the playful sign of Leo. Leo is warm and, uh, and happy, empathetic, giving, dynamic, uh, wanting to play. It's your inner sun child coming out here. Uh, and so you might have a lot of gracious, heartfelt, warm feelings this month. And she will stay there until the 22nd where she then moves into Virgo and into your 12th house. So she'll be pulling back a little bit after the 22nd. So anything scheduled for vacations or, or taking a little time off, up to the 22nd, you'll get the most out of her. Then we have end of the month here, uh, Libra. Uh, Venus and Jupiter, they're going to be uh, meeting up in a sextile. Uh, and that's a relatively good aspect to have. Venus is love, it's romance, it's those things we love and desire. It's also our finances. And um, it coming in with Jupiter that will expand anything it touches. Well, hey, this is a great day to mark off on your calendar. And I would say include it up to the 30th, 31st, because Venus is also training Pluto, which will bring a lot of intensity into the mix. So, okay, so romance and intensity and good aspects well that's got to be great just be a little careful on the 31st when mars angles negatively to uranus so from all this lovey-dovey and intensity there might be a little issue there on the very last day of the month try to avoid it and let the beauty linger from those days prior we have a full moon too and this is going to be in your fifth house for fun and happiness uh, and romance on the 22nd Mark that on your calendar. Wonderful day or evening to just go do something with your beloved. Or it could also be a good time to perhaps meet somebody too. So this is pretty much what we have for you here this month. The outer planets, they're still in the same houses and sectors that we've spoken about in the previous months. They're still doing their thing there, moving slowly. But, you know, it's like... They're, they're somewhat subconscious to us on a subtle level, but it's when the personal planets, those fast-moving planets, create angles and aspects to them, it triggers their power and, and we have happenings taking place. So, um, yeah, the, the Neptune is now uh, retrograde. Uranus is going to turn retrograde from July 17th, so she'll be taking a little step backward. Uh, but Pluto also is retrograde, and then we have Saturn moving direct, like I said, July 9th. So I wish you a very good month. I hope you will have a wonderful one. Uh, all of this now focused in your 10th house for career, Libra, is uh, really going to get you wanting to get up and go because this whole last year has been, it's like a, a compressor. You've been compressing so much in in such a short time, really reaching for new knowledge, gaining new insights, uh, studying and so forth. But now from June 25th, when Jupiter moves into Cancer, it's moving into your 10th house of career. So many of you, especially those born um, very early in the sign, will start getting business opportunities to go out there and start working uh, new jobs and this triangle for you is all from your career to that Saturn that has been sleeping in your income house. 
he will start securing your finances uh, and giving it good grounding now and you'll see it in the coming months and uh, this Jupiter is going to be in your 10th house for the better part of a year so till June of next year so you have this whole phase to actually act out and bring it to life Jupiter is only here once every 12 years so it'll be a good year for you Libra so enjoy yourselves listen to your moon sign and your rising sign and I'll see you next month bye now